Hi and welcome to this tutorial where I'm basically going to show you uh, my workflow to how I basically edited my hyperlapse. Now the original images that I used for the hyperlapse were obviously taken on a Mavic 2 drone. Now I will quickly show you the, the, the workflow which I had with regards to creating this. So what I basically did is I basically took all the raw images from my hyperlapse and imported them onto Lightroom as you can see. Uh, I put them in a the folder, took them straight off the SD card, put them in the folder on my desktop uh, and then obviously imported them into Lightroom. Now once you have all your photos in Lightroom as you can see I have my whole should be 277 slides here, well 231 it was 277 frames but it could be due to editing <clears throat> excuse me so once you've done that what you want to obviously do is go on your generally your first image and then what you want to obviously do is go into develop and you want to develop that picture literally how you want so you know do your exposure do your contrast highlights shadows whites blacks uh, do your texture do your clarities etc 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 uh, apply such things as noise reduction and sharpening, noise reductions here, I did luminance, detail, contrast, color, detail, smoothness, all up. So you basically have this really nice image as you can see. Now once you've done all that, what you then want to do is obviously then go back to the grid. So you can do that by pressing G, which takes you back to the grid view. Now, I'm on Windows by the way, so you press G and you go back to this window where you have the grid view. Now once you've got that, what you want to do is then copy the settings that you have from this original picture. There are tutorials on YouTube. I can't remember all the shortcuts, so I don't want to make this video too long. But you then copy those settings from that first picture and you then apply them to every single picture that is in your sequence. So what it basically does is all these changes and all these edits you made in your original picture with regards to contrast, exposure and stuff is then applied to all your pictures so it's consistent across all your images. What you then want to do is you export all your images out so you click export and you export them all out to where you want to keep them so you, I put them in a subfolder called time lapse 4 it's on my desktop and it will export all those images in that folder now once you've done that what you want to do is go into prem it's going to premiere as you can see and then what you want to do is when you go into premiere you go file import and then you go to your folder so for me it was obviously on my desktop you go into time lapse 4 so all my pictures are here as you can see all the pictures are here and then all you want to do is literally click on all of them and you see this little checkbox here it says image sequence so you just check that and then click open and what it will do is it will import your hyperlapses here as an image sequence now once I had them imported into Premiere what I then did was I went through and obviously made the edits with regards to color grading as such now my main issue I had was there was a lot of noise because it was obviously a nighttime hyperlapse. Now I'll just take off all the Lumetri settings so you can see what the original image actually looked like because it was pretty it was pretty bad. I had a lot of noise in my pictures uh, and I was generally concerned with regards to how I was going to edit and get all the detail back. Now like I said I'll just take all, off all the Lumetri settings so you can see what the initial image was. So this is the image without any color grading, without anything. So it's, it's still a really nice image. Now, if I do play it back, you have to bear with me my PC because obviously this is 4K, so it might stutter just a little bit. As you can see, it's, it's, it's stuttering because the, the PC can't handle all the, the edits that I put on it. Now, the main issue I found was this horizon that I had and the moon that you can obviously see up there. Uh, when you play it back there was a lot of flicker due to the difference of light as the sun was going down um, which affected my hyperlapse and didn't really it, it basically just didn't make it look as nice as I wanted it to now the way I got around that was I watched a tutorial with regards to how people were doing night hyperlapse there was a lot of tutorials out there and the main thing that they taught you was generally to apply a Lumetri color uh, effect from the effects panel onto your actual footage and then what you can do is see these buttons here, there's different masks you can create. So you can create a, an eclipse mask, a four point polygon mask, or you can do a draw, free draw bezier. Now what I did is I did a free draw bezier and I basically just marked around the horizon on my actual image. Now what that enables you to do is it creates a mask 
around the top part of your image and then what you can do is you can basically just color grade just that section of your footage and then what I basically did was I applied uh, exposure settings that would darken my horizon to a point where you couldn't really see it there wasn't any flicker it, so it basically looks like nighttime um, so I applied such things as exposure I took the exposure right down uh, and basically just played around with different settings to get it to a level I was now once I did the first mask um, I wasn't necessarily too happy with the results now what I obviously did was then I applied another one let me just go up apologies uh, I applied another one which darkened the image like such now to my eye I think that looks aesthetically pleasing um, because you're obviously your, your main focus point on this hyperlapse is obviously the cityscapes and the cars going past and all that kind of stuff now what I also did was obviously my initial Lumetri color profile was on the initial image which I then used I then went onto my color grade profiles over here and I did my white balance and I basically set it to the whitest point of my image so you use this little dropper and you basically click on the white of the image now after doing that I wasn't necessarily 100% happy with how the image looked again so again I played with the temperature sliders I played with the tints to generally get it to a level where I was happy uh, now to remove even more noise from the image and get it to a satisfactory level what I also did was I added the effect from the effects panel called VRD noise and what I basically did was I selected salt and pepper which is I believe the noise in the image I'm not 100% sure this is just experimentation but it, it worked for me so hopefully this tutorial helps other people and then I selected my noise level and I went all the way up so as you can see that's zero you can see it's it's relatively like the, this little bush section here in the middle with the trees was really noisy and then obviously when I take it up to one you can see you, you get a lot more detail in a lot of the sections uh, and that's basically what, what I did to edit this image uh, I mean granted it's probably not the best result I can probably do a lot more um, but for the simple aspects of me wanting to post it on social media uh, and on Instagram I think it worked really well and the end result is generally really good so if I just click out of this and I just click out of this uh, I have the hyperlapse actually here somewhere bear with me I believe it's this one and the end result was this basically so as you can see there's no noise on the horizon there's no flicker so if I was to generally go back and show you my initial render which was I believe this one see on the horizon there's a lot of flicker due to the difference of light uh, I mean the overall image is nice and the overall hyperlapse is nice but the flicker on the horizon was generally what really annoyed me I didn't want that flicker on the horizon there's probably numerous other ways that I could have gone around with regards to getting that uh, that flicker and noise out of the initial image um, but for me this is what worked so I, I just generally wanted to share my tips with regards to noise reduction and color grading and what I did to generally get that out of my hyperlapse um, I hope this was helpful for many people um, if you have any questions with regards to how I generally imported the images and copied the settings in Lightroom, please leave a comment on the video below and I'll be sure to make another tutorial quickly showing you how that's done. There's many tutorials literally on YouTube teaching how to do this so I don't want to clutter up YouTube with another tutorial basically showing you what is the, the workflow in Lightroom because there's, there's plenty of tutorials by many awesome YouTubers that show you how to do that. So hopefully this has helped a couple of people with regards to reducing noise. Um, generally my tips would be if you have a, a horizon on your hyperlapse which is causing you issues with regards to like it's overexposed or underexposed by all means you know import a Lumetri color effect from the effects panel drag it across to your footage and create a mask around bits that you generally want to you know uh, play with the exposure and the contrast and such and just basically just just play around with the settings until you're generally happy with your final image uh, yeah and then just export it numerous times and uh, check your footage and see if you're happy with it um, the main thing that I also faced um, just towards the end of this video which I thought I'd point out quickly was when I'd export things out of Windows my main issue was that how it looked on my Windows PC 
was not how it would look on an iPhone. Now, that isn't necessarily down to how I was color grading. That's obviously down to like how people view different images and how it looks on different uh, devices and such. Now, one workaround I found for this was you can actually change your color profile ICC settings on Windows 10 to reflect what you're editing to. What that means is you can set the color profile on a PC so it basically the way that your PC handles colors will be the same as what you're exporting out. For example, on my Windows 10 PC, for example, there's color profiles that are called things like Apple RGB, there's sRGB and all these kind of other complicated color profiles. What I did was I selected the Apple RGB profile because I believed it would basically as closely as possible resemble the colors that I wanted to see on an iPhone and an iMac and et cetera, et cetera, when I export to Instagram. Because most people in this day and age, you can hate me for this if you want, will view footage on an iPhone. It's the most commonly used device. Most people own an iPhone or similar. Um, so what I basically did is I changed my color profiles on my PC to Apple RGB. So my PC would treat all the colors that I use on my PC as Apple RGB. So when I export it, all the colors that I now see on my screen would necessarily be what I see on an iPhone, for example. It worked for me and the colors are pretty much the same on an iPhone when I view it on Instagram after I've obviously exported my video and obviously put it on Instagram. The colors are necessarily exactly the same on my iPhone as I have on my PC because I've changed the color profile to reflect the space that I'm working in, for example. Now, hopefully that's helpful for many people. If you want a tutorial on how to change ICC profiles, which are color profiles, I can do a tutorial on that as well. It's really, really easy. Um, I also found a color profile for the monitor I'm using. I'm using a ProLite Iyama 34 inch widescreen. Um, it's not the greatest monitor for doing uh, color grading and video work on, but for me it works just having a widescreen because I can have my timeline along the bottom and it works for me um, with regards to my workflow. So hopefully this has helped many people. It's probably not the best uh, tutorial in the world and the back of my video probably looks really cluttered. Um, hopefully the audio is okay. Um, but thanks for checking this out if you're still here and checking this out. By all means leave me a like if you found this video at least a little bit helpful or you found what I'm saying helpful. Like I said, if you want any more tips or any more tutorials, um, by all means, leave me a comment below. I'll be sure to do so. I don't do many tutorials because I'm not always very comfortable being in front of the camera, being socially anxious and being anxious in general, but I will try my best to try and make more informative videos with regards to tutorials and my workflow with regards to video editing. So thanks for checking this out. I hope everyone's staying safe during lockdown and uh, thanks for checking out this video. Peace out.